To all concerned, this section took a long time to record, so it will probably be cut up into multiple episodes. Enjoy. Well, hey there. Welcome back to Factorio Space Age. I'm Joe Mama, your host. Okay, take a look down here. We're on Gleba. Still, again, but I, I don't plan on leaving Gleba anytime soon. Eventually we will, but not attending to now. But anyway, take a look at this. It's a little bit different than you saw it last time, but largely still the same. And it's still, it's still self, uh, what's the word? Self-sufficient. It's still going. And I, I'm doing almost no intervention or changing of things. But I do want to point something out that did happen. So last episode, we made our first Gleba Science and, you know, set up this little process. And it seems to be working really well. Okay. It seemed to be working really well. Now, we, uh, I even, you know, got some Gleba or um, got some, what do they call it? Pentapod eggs and used that to start building some science. Now, right now, that portion of this is shut down. I'm not making the science right now. However, um, so something funny happened. I wasn't really paying attention. I was working on something else. I mean, there's a whole lot of stuff going on, which by the way, so this here, by the way, you know, this cloud, I was wondering what this thing was. And then I see over here that what used to say pollution now says spores. So, and I think Board Bob mentioned that too, that, uh, in one of the comments that, yeah, this is a hazard of farming is that you're going to start producing spores. So anyway, these things get produced, but I'm expanding the farms a little bit. And I'm also trying to construct a space down here where we can move a lot of our operations so we can get the fruit and everything, you know, we, we can process it close to where we pick it. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, I was working on this, all of this when um, th this operation actually did start to shut down. The uh, fruits were not being produced. The uh, uh, All of the nutrients were turning to spoilage and actually started running out of power because there wasn't that much spoilage to keep everything fed. It was pretty bad. I was wondering what was happening. And I realized that what I had done is because I knew I wanted to set this farm up, the only way you could I could set it up was if I had I, hang on I want to get the name right here is uh, da, 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 artificial jelly nut soil and artificial Yamako soil I needed that to increase the farms so I started and in order to make the Yamako soil and the jelly nut soil you need seeds now obviously we're making seeds seeds are being made and with the bio chambers if I didn't sufficiently explain it normally if we used assemblers which apparently you can do you can set these processes up with assemblers but if you do so you will at best achieve parity meaning with every fruit with every 50 fruit you might get one seed and one seed grows 50 fruit so if as statistics always does um, if there's a variance if for whatever reason you get 50, you know a seed only produces 49 fruit and then of those 49 you don't get any seeds then you're out seeds and then what's eventually going to happen is your seeds disappear and then you have no way to grow more stuff but if you put it in a bio a, a bio chamber instead of the assembler the bio chamber gives an extra bump to production so therefore you have a little bit of wiggle room and uh you can overcome the statistical variation and you will be self-sufficient that's proven to be true but I would it, it still failed I was like what the hell did I do and I realized that I found later on that I had set up a provider chest or something I'd set up a chest no a, a, a requester chest that pulled a portion of the seeds and was just collecting them and I, I don't know where that chest is now I think I pulled it up but that chest was um, full of both types of seeds. So my seeds, I had totally forgotten that I'd set it up and everything shut down because it pulled too many seeds out of the mix. So once I turned that off and then I set this little option up here, basically pulling nutrients off the belts to these assemblers, which are producing the artificial soil. They're requesting a small number of nuts and 
producing a modest number of soil segments. Um, that kept the that kept the seed thing under control and everything went back to normal. But here's something I found out with the pentapod eggs. So I came back here and everything shut down. I started looking in here and I'm like, okay, well, let me check on my pentapod eggs. And there were gone. There were no pentapod eggs anywhere. And I'm thinking, what the hell? Are you seriously going to tell me that I, I didn't know of any attack? I, I, as far as I knew, the pentapod eggs were still in here. And I'm like, you're going to tell me that everything turned out perfectly, that every pentapod egg got consumed? I refuse to believe that. That can't be right. And then I started looking at these bad boys, the lasers that I had set up. I don't know if you caught it in the last, uh, I didn't even mention lasers. I just said, I'm gonna set these up because reasons. And so I kind of threw these lasers around thinking if something were to happen, they'd be there. And cause I'm pentapod eggs, you know? Well, turns out I roll over this one or this one right here. It's got two kills. This one has two kills. This one has two, so that's six. There's, there's, you know, one more is seven. This one has three, so there's ten. And this one has two, so that's twelve. Then another, and there's thirteen. There's fifteen, and there's sixteen. And I, I think that's all of them. So, the sixteen kills between all the lasers. So that means there was a hatching and lasers were fired, and apparently nothing got damaged. But the pentapod eggs did hatch, and I just didn't see them, and I'm kind of bummed about it. But anyway, so once we corrected the seed issue, then this all started to work. This is working fantastic. Right now it's just producing seeds. I, I've got it shut down for science. Um, but let's go take a look at our farms. Okay, now I've got two farming agricultural machines. What do we call these things? Uh, agricultural towers. And this one's producing jelly nut, uh, jelly nut fruit. And there's even a little bit of um, Yamako fruit being produced over here just because the soil matches. And then there's Yamako fruit being produced over here. And apparently we have massive amounts of both. Now, the only thing here is I may need I may need to think about um, setting up uh, setting up some form of uh, what do you call it I need to set up a way to remove the uh, spoilage out of here and for some reason oh yeah yeah we might have to set up spoilage removal for these it hasn't been an issue yet I will say that's interesting. It has not been an issue. Oh, no, never mind. I take that back. We have spoilage. That is very much an issue. Okie dokie. Okay. So, that being the scenario, let's get started on that almost immediately. Oh, no, it's actually pulling the spoilage out. Okay. It's doing it. That's right. This is the whole reason I was using bots. Is because if stuff like this starts to happen... Then, um, and, and you know, I may just do this just to, just to make room for more fruit. Uh, but I, I use chests just because if spoilage starts to happen, then, um, okay, I'll bring this here. Actually, I, I'm going to have to walk down there. Um, if spoilage happens in a provider chest, there is a requester chest in the system that's always asking for spoilage and that requester chest is making sure that the provider chests are clear but it looks like looking at the state of the fruit in that chest it looks like we might have a mass spoilage happening soon this is producing let me look at this they're all really close so here's what we do um we'll put another provider chest there can i do it okay oh it was there okay um and then we'll set this up filters remove spoilage okay just to just to clear the spoilage out you know what i'm saying 
And I think seeds don't spoil, so that's good. Um, but this will help keep the spoilage down to a minimum. This looks pretty good. I won't worry about it. It's just maybe I will worry about it because you know what? Better to be ahead of it than to be re reactive. You know what I'm saying? Um, although right now with these fruit trees might not be the best. Hang on. Okay. Move that there. Then dink dink there okay we'll put that in place yeah so just you know trying to stay ahead of everything it's so far so good everything seems to be working very well not complaining all right uh same here filters spoilage control that seems to be the biggest thing in this game just freaking spoilage control staying on top of it it will get you okay we can remove we can afford to remove a jelly nut tree okay put, really come on all right and then spoilage i'll show you something else too we're gonna try um Oh, really? That's, uh... No power? What the heck's up with that? Do I have any... Okay, yeah, let's see if I can stick one of these here. Okay, there's power for that. And let's go over to the other farm. Oh, wait, no, we gotta do this. We do it here? Yeah, all done. Okay, so let's go over to the other farm and see if we can do the same. And I think we're gonna need more... Ah, I don't have any red chips. Okay, we'll go back. Uh, while we do, I will show you what else is going on. So, one of the things, if if you've been following my last video, and maybe even read the comments, um, one of the things Bob and I have played, or talked about playing around with, is moving um, research here to Gleba. Moving overall research here to Gleba. And the reason for that is that um, science, uh, Gleba science, whatever it's called, uh, agricultural science spoils. If we take a look at our list of sciences, and there it is, Mountain Dew science, uh, d d d toward the bottom, spoilage time. If it's a good 100% fresh science, it spoils in an hour. If it's not 100% fresh, then there's a fraction by which, a fraction of an hour. So if it's 60% fresh, it'll last, you know, 60% of an hour, which is, uh, what, 36 minutes? So, uh, and it will go down accordingly. So with that in mind, the logistics of making sure that it gets on the rocket and the rocket that you have a, a platform in orbit ready to bring that science in place is a pain in the ass. Why not bring the science here? Because another factor to consider, I mean, somebody mentioned, you know, when we threw this idea around, somebody did mention that, you know, it's not really recommended because, you know, it's you bring all the other science is expensive. And I, I concur with that. I get that. And certainly we haven't tried it yet. And if other people have and determined that, you know what, the cost to gain ratio is too high, um, then yeah, then it might not be recommended. We're going, at least I am, and I think Bob has already started. I'm still going to try it. And if I, ch I might change my mind. I am, this is simply me feeling it out. I appreciate all advice. And I am, I go into it knowing that I'm spending a lot on rockets to bring science here. But if I think about it, so the only science that I'm bringing here is red, green, um, black, blue, purple, and yellow. So these six sciences are what I'm bringing here. I can carry that in a single rocket. Um, and if, uh, I mean, depending on how much I carry, I can carry a lot. And then I can fit all that in a single platform and do a single trip just as I would with 
the uh, if I were to send Gleba science there, but a rocket on novice is a lot cheaper than a rocket here. And I'm not even certain on the process to be self-sufficient. You know what? Let me take a look. I just, just, just because, just reasons. Let me look through the processes here and see. Okay, so there is a way to make rocket fuel. Okay, got it. Rocket fuel from jelly. Okay, so that's good to know. Plastic. Okay, so if you can make plastic, you can make red chips. You can make green chips because one of the things... Okay, if one of the things you can do is you can use... Um, where, where did I do it? Uh... You can turn Yamako fruit and uh, jelly nut jelly into bacteria that will make copper. Oops, you know what? That's gotta, no, that's, that, that'll still happen. Okay. Um, you can still make uh, copper with this uh, bacteria. Why is there, okay, okay. Cause that's gotta change the, that bacteria will change to copper ore. So we can make copper and iron here. Okay, so that's how we make green chips. And if we get plastic, we can make red chips. This is the first time I've talked this through, so excuse me while I, you know, figure this out. We make plastic. The green chips will already be here. We got more copper, so we can make red chips. We got red chips and green chips. Okay, so the next the next drip is sulfur. There it is, biosulfur. I had not seen that. So if we can make sulfur, Okay, sulfuric acid is what? Water and sulfur and iron plates. Ah, so there's green, or there's blue science, or blue chips. Okay, so there's the blue chips. Um, and okay, what about, okay, so if lightweight, low density materials are copper, which we, which we got, steel, which is just twice baked pasta, I mean, twice baked iron. Okay, so we got that, and then we have the plastic bar. Okay, so there's our low density structure. Okay, so there's our rocket. Okay, so if we were to set that up, we could locally produce our rockets. Okay, got it. All right, maybe we'll do that. Um, and we might be able to do it in a quantity that's effective, but for now, we can process science with... Uh, and, oh, and then the, the third factor that made me decide to bring science here, other than the spoilage, but it's just, I am, I tend to be single focused, hyper focused on certain things. And once I get, once I get focused on something, I tend to, to chew on it. And if I'm focused on something, I don't want to worry about, you know, I, I don't want that to affect Gleba science. I want Gleba science to immediately start going to work, which it can do if it's here. You know what I'm saying? I, I though I suppose I could set up an automated system um, of, you know, launch pad or launch pads, a uh, space platforms that could work. Um, but for now, that's a lot of work. While I'm still trying to to mass produce. Uh, science to begin with, mass produced Gleba science. So I'm okay with this decision for now, but I appreciate that input and I might change it, okay? Especially looking at that info that yes, with a little bit of, you know, paying attention to what resources are available, we can make rockets on Gleba. So that's good to know. So I will file, I will not just duly note that, I will put a little pin in that in the back of my brain and probably chew on it later. So, okay, so that covers what we're doing here on Gleba, but I wanna show you what we're doing in space. <sighs> okay, so in order to do this, one of the things I had to do, in order to, to move science here, notice white science is here as well, space science. Well, I did in fact, where's the astral, where's astral prime? <laughs> Here's astral prime, and it looks a little different than it did before, because it used to be a stationary platform in orbit around Novice, okay? And it was doing just fine. Well, now it is uh, in orbit around Novice. 
And the reason is we need to produce white science. It was easier for me to just move this once. So I slapped a couple of engines on it, threw together um, a very not efficient fuel production system and a self-defense system. So let's check, uh, let's check, see how much, um, we have a thousand rounds. Excellent. That was my cap is a thousand rounds for this platform. And I said, I set up a, uh, a little a section right here to produce rounds from some of the gathered asteroids. And it seems to be working. Iron plate is being turned into rounds and it's keeping up with the asteroids that are coming close to it. It survived the trip, no hits. And then while it's here, it's actually the number of stored ammunition has actually gone up. So that tells me that the asteroid defense system is doing its job and I can leave it alone. Does that make sense? So in the meantime, it's producing science. I've got uh, the science going straight into the platform, straight into the, uh, the, the hub, if you will, of the platform. And I've got the inserter that grabs the science set up with the circuit connection. So it will, it'll stop working that the inserter will stop working when the count inside the hub, which as you can see the red wire, it's reading the contents of the hub for both of these. When the con when the number of white science in the hub reaches 8,000, this inserter stops. So that makes sure that this doesn't just fill up with white science. And same with the, with the ammunition. This is reading the contents and when, when this inserter discovers that there's a thousand rounds or a thousand magazines of ammunition in the hub it stops operating so it basically it just keeps the cargo bay from being loaded you know what i'm saying but between the solar cells the um the number of insert or the number of asteroid grabbers they seem to be that one okay we've got plenty of water we've got plenty of iron it seems um at least i think Oh, that's not actually... Is that not bringing any iron? Oh, oh, are you kidding me? Did I forget to put an inserter here? I sure did. Okay, there we go. That explains it. I'm sitting here thinking, man, I should get more iron, but I'm not. Okay, that's fine. So now that one's doing its job. And what about this one? This carbon? Is this one actually... Oh my gosh. This explains so much. Sitting here thinking. Okay, I never actually put the insert. See, this is what I'm talking about. You know, the sort of thing that, you know, dumbass, dumbasses do. And even with that buffoonery, this thing managed to supply the trip. These front three asteroid grabbers could not offload their stuff. So that's interesting. Okay, why are you no go? Oh, because this one's already fully loaded with carbon. Got it. Okay. Bingo. Plenty of carbon and there's plenty of iron, so we're good there. So anyway, that is that is the science platform. Now let's go to the Raj. The Raj is the only one that's still sitting back at home because I wanted to give it a break and I don't need it. Um, it's sitting out there waiting for the next planet, next thing we need. It's got a whole bunch of supplies on it, so it's fine it's sitting there waiting outside novice let's go to the meet to the mobius now this guy i'm starting to become impressed with this thing is um, i haven't even turned the nuclear on it's going to be my science bitch this thing i think is going to be it it's going to do my science run i did a test run it loaded it up with science with its eight engines but see the thing is this thing is almost 1400 tons thing is heavy and yet with these i put eight engines on it and it still managed to go like over 200 something kilometers per second it was fast and the guns kept up um the fuel kept up it it's got plenty of fuel and it barely had put a dent in the fuel when it finally got to uh <clears throat> when it finally got to gleba and i turned it right back around and picked up some more and it's doing everything I was hoping it would do. And I think with its speed and ammunition is still 
very, very high. It's a thousand, right? It doesn't produce its own ammunition. It will have to go back to ammo up. But I'm kind of thinking I might reconfigure things a little bit on here so that it does produce its own ammunition. I mean, I think it could. I think I could do it. I'd have to, to rearrange a few things, but I think this thing could produce its own ammo. I think it's got the space for it. Anyway, yeah, it kept up. <clears throat> you know what? For now, let's... Uh, there's no reason for this thing to hang around. It dumped everything down that I wanted it to dump, so let's send this thing on its way back. Shall we? Go back to novice. Okay. Yeah, let's see how fast it goes. Okay. 150, 60, 70, 80, 90, 200, 202, 203. Yeah, I think it topped out at 203, if I remember correctly. Right about there. So yeah, so it tops out. It's 200 miles an hour, 200 kilometers an hour, or kilometers a second rather. It's it's pretty speedy and and it uh, it holds its own. Very happy with this, even though it's freaking big as a Nimitz aircraft carrier. Um. Oh crap on a crutch! It all of a sudden got a speed boost for some reason. It's not 222 kilometers per second. How did that happen? Really? Okay, well that doesn't make any sense to me. And, wow, it's almost all the way to novice now. Okay, so 200 something, 220 something, that's pretty impressive. And, boom, it's at novice. Wow, good. Now here's one I haven't shown you guys. The squall. This thing, um... It's okay. Not overly thrilled with it. I was this was going to be my science bitch, but I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. And uh this was a small little guy that I made with the sole purpose of um this was going to be my my delivery guy. Just small, that's all it would do. It produces it does produce its own ammo, but it, it produces fuel, but everything sort of focused on get there fast but it doesn't get there fast it three engines even and this thing only weighs less than 200 tons so i'm thinking oh well maybe with you know the the what you call it the uh the mobius has eight engines and weighs like six times as much almost seven times as much maybe maybe even eight I can't do the math in my head that fast, but it, I mean, it's, it's huge. But this thing is, uh, you know, an eighth the size, but theoretically has three eighths the power. So why wouldn't it go faster? Well, it doesn't go fast. In fact, we're gonna go ahead and send this thing. Okay, you know what? It's got some things. We'll go ahead and drop. Um, boom, 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 boom. Um, and I think that'll do it. Okay, I think that's all. And now let's send it on its way back to Novice. And let's see how fast it goes. Now it's got... It's got mostly, um, yellow ammunition. But it's got a couple of... Uh, it's got a couple of depleted uranium guns as well. Just... Just because. Okay, it's going at 200 kilometers a second. That's not bad. For some reason, I thought it was it was going like way slower than that. Going 306 mega newtons of thrust. Oh, now it's what's with the boost? Is it gravity? Is it because novice starts to pay? Oh, maybe that's what it is. It's counting. It's it's the gravity well. Okay. Okay, so the speed is about the same as the uh, Mobius. I thought this thing was slower. I guess not. I guess I looked at it the wrong time. But the fuel. Holy crap. It, it does go through fuel. And uh, it's got plenty of water, but this thing 
does not have enough fuel for a quick turnaround. It's, I mean, look, I used 80% of the fuel on that trip. 80% of the oxidizer, 80% of the thruster fuel. So this, uh, not a good design. I would need to increase fuel production in this thing and maybe in, increase fuel storage because it used a lot of fuel. So that's something to keep in mind. This is not a perfect design. So the only other one in orbit around Novice or around Gleba right now is Astral Prime and that one's going to stay there for now, which is just fine. So it can produce some science. 